We all know it's a big job to manage land and water resources on your cattle operations, especially as these commodities become more limited and valuable. Matt Fleck visits a Virginia farmer that developed a system to help improve water quality in his community while also increasing his beef production through better forages. Virginia has a long history of cattle production on places like the Overhome Farm where Ronnie Knuckles is the fifth generation on the land. For farmers like Ronnie, nearby waterways and highly populated areas create both challenges and opportunities. Virginia has challenges based on land use primarily. We're also in the mid-Atlantic region, so we have lots of population centers and cattle production exists very closely with those mixed use areas of suburban, urban, and rural, and we also have lots of surface water in Virginia. So everywhere there's cattle, there's surface water pretty close by too. The farm here at Ronnie's is located in Goochland County. He's within a mile of the James River, which is a major tributary and major watershed throughout Virginia that empties directly into the Chesapeake Bay. Although we're approximately two and a half hours from where the James technically enters into the bay, we all understand that, that all the runoff here from this farm operation ultimately would potentially impact the Chesapeake Bay. So water quality is a, is a big initiative in Virginia on agricultural lands and Ronnie, like many other livestock producers, recognize that and have taken uh, voluntary actions to exclude their livestock from the streams and ponds which would have an impact downstream. When we put in the stream exclusion, you know, when we first considered that, it was springtime, the grass was lush, and of course all the best grass is right down next to the creek. And you're looking at a 35-foot strip, and we had a lot of streams. Uh, with streams, a bank, and the wooded areas, we were excluding close to 50 acres of the 175 that I started with. So I was concerned trying to increase my herd size. You know, what's this loss? acreage going to do? You know, can it be compensated? In addition to fencing out his streams, Ronnie worked with NRCS to implement a rotational grazing plan that uses polywire temporary fencing to maximize the grass available for his cattle. When we brought in the stream exclusion program and the rotational grazing, we were able to manage the herd. We were able to control where they grazed, how long they grazed. For Ronnie, as well as most producers who consider doing this stream exclusion and taking out a 35-foot buffer around all these surface waters, that's a big hurdle for anybody to, to cross. And most of them are concerned that, oh, I'm losing so many acres of pasture land. How am I going to make up for that? And Ronnie took that leap of faith. He trusted his local conservationist. He went ahead and did it. He's increasing utilization of the forages, and he's increasing productivity, the health vigor of those forages across his pasture acres. So that increased yield and utilization combined more than make up for the small percentage of the pasture land that's now outside in that buffer. In the context of water quality improvement practices in Virginia, stream fencing, particularly the role of buffers, is important. Buffers are necessary so that we have a sequestration area for nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus and then sediments so that they don't reach those surface waters and then eventually the Chesapeake Bay. They don't have to be challenges viewed though as a reduction in the grazing area because the focus then really should be additionally in water quality improvement again back to the upland pasture improvement and that's where programs that we participate in as beef producers through conservation cost share and financial incentives like EQIP particularly give us the opportunity to do both well. Once the stream buffers and the grazing plan were in place, Ronnie quickly saw improvements to both his pastures and his cattle herd. To have good cattle, you've got to have good grazing. To have good grazing, you've got to have active, healthy soil. And it all comes back to that level. So I think it's a key component, and I think it's so often it's overlooked that you just don't, you look on top of the ground, you look across grass, you don't look down and think about what it's doing below. In addition to what it did for the soils and the grasses, uh, we gained control of the herd, which I didn't have. But with the better grazing, you know, we saw the quality of the animals improve also. The value to managing forage resources and creating uniform cattle is very simple. It's the bottom line. The better job you do managing forage resources, the more efficiently you put weight on cattle, and the more uniform cattle are, the better they package and the better they sell. 
In fact, Ronnie believes working with NRCS and putting conservation measures in place has made a positive impact on his cattle management and the returns his cattle bring him in the marketplace. With a different management style and the improved grazing, my weaning weights uh, probably have gone up 100 pounds per animal. And I'm, I'm selling them heavier sooner than I was six, seven years ago. So it's a total package. Ronnie is a prime example of how he, he started this conservation project with the exclusion of the, of the waters. But what it has allowed him to do is uh, kind of build the infrastructure of a grazing system. And what that does, it gives him complete management over the livestock that he's raising. So they're, they're more docile, he can, he's around them each day. Um, it's easier to get those cattle up when you've got to work them or load them or move them and so forth. But as far as a, a production benefit, overall the, the performance of his herd has increased year by year. Just being able to manage them in a system, keeping fresh, nutritious forage in front of them more days of the year, you know, th their body condition is excellent. They're rebreeding faster when that time comes. And uh, all of it plays together to improve performance of the livestock uh, in a system that's beneficial to our natural resources. With clear running streams, healthy grass, and thriving cattle, Ronnie Knuckles is doing his best to carry on the family farming tradition. And he, like other producers across the country, can count on the expertise of the NRCS team to help them better manage their resources and keep them on their land. The NRCS mission is helping people help the land. So that's what we want to do is try to make sure that we conserve the natural resources and keep those families out on the farmer ranch. Well, the partnerships that we have with agencies like NRCS on the federal level down to the soil and water districts on the local level are probably even more profound in the southeast than anywhere. The southeast has about 40 percent of the nation's cow herd and most of those herds average from two to three dozen head. So it isn't a large beef operator's game to become involved in environmental stewardship. These are programs that are accessible to all of us and they're perhaps more widely used and most beneficial when they're used on smaller scales where we have pressure from urban sprawl and we need evidence that agriculture is doing the right thing. To keep production agricultural viable here in Virginia and across the United States, it's really important to be able to have good stewards like Ronnie uh, to work with him to open up the farm, to have whether it be school groups or other producer groups, uh, members of the community, to be able to come in and see how he's managing his herd how he's managing the natural resources in a way that's beneficial for everybody. I think the services provided by the Natural Resource Conservation Service is one that's available to everybody. It doesn't matter the size of the farm or where you're located. They're here to serve all of us and they've played a vital role here and I would encourage anybody, even if you think you have a good system in place, talk to them, call them, check the website, see what they have to offer, see what you can learn through that cooperation. Reporting from the Overhome Farm in Goochland County, Virginia, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you have conservation practices you'd like to put in place on your operation, you should start by visiting with your local NRCS office about the technical and financial assistance they provide. Go to their website nrcs.usda.gov to find an office near you.